You remember the cartel of Islamic dictatorships that hijacked the United Nations Human Rights Council, don't you? And then promptly passed a resolution banning the criticism of religion? Yes, of course you do. Well, apparently they've decided now that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights gives people just a bit too much freedom and dignity for their liking, and so they've devised their own Islamic Human Rights Charter, which is a bit like Satan getting his own set of pearly gates, and about as convincing. Unfortunately, the Islamic Charter is based on Sharia, which is, of course, invalid because it's God's law and God doesn't exist. To claim that he does is extremely offensive to those of us who passionately believe otherwise. It's a grave insult to our most deeply cherished beliefs, an assault on the very core of our being, no less, and a violation, therefore, of our human rights. Isn't it? Well, isn't it? Now, all this would be something of a tiresome joke if not for the fact that this nonsense is beginning to have a real effect on our basic freedoms, certainly here in Europe, and Americans would do well to wake up and pay attention to what's going on. Ever since the Islamic countries demanded that Western governments make it a crime to criticise Islam, all over Europe, blasphemy laws and religious insult laws are being used to criminalise freedom of speech. The latest is Ireland, a country that has been literally raped by religion, yet has passed a law protecting it from criticism. Talk about Stockholm Syndrome. Free speech, they tell us, carries certain responsibilities. Well, too true it does. The most primary one being that what you say should be the truth, and the truth should never be embarrassing, and it should never be illegal, and any government that's so embarrassed by the truth that it makes it illegal is governing under false pretenses. The Dutch government, for example, which is in the process of embarrassing itself by prosecuting the leader of one of the country's largest political parties for the crime of telling the truth. You see, these days in Europe we've become so used to weasel words and double standards that the truth has become distinctly unfashionable. Speaking your mind is now seen as virtually antisocial because some opportunistic crybaby is sure to take offence and throw a tantrum and that might threaten community cohesion. Now, what has all this got to do with America? Well, President Obama is very keen on showing respect to the Muslim world, and nobody can fault him on his record so far, bowing as he did to the King of Saudi Arabia like some kind of vassal, and then making a rather flattering and some might even say dishonest speech in Cairo, although to be fair to him, he did stop short of prostrating himself towards Mecca, at least for the time being. But because he wants to play ball with Islam, especially now that they've given him a peace prize through their shills in the Norwegian establishment that he's going to have to justify for the next three years, the Iranians must be rubbing their hands with glee at that one, the American government has now done something that if they did it in their own country, it would violate the Constitution. They have co-sponsored a UN resolution that puts a limit on freedom of speech. Because the Islamic countries don't like free speech, they don't like free anything. Except free foreign aid, obviously, they can't get enough of that. Even the Saudis want aid now. Have you heard the latest? I could hardly believe it. The Saudis have said that when the world starts using less oil, they expect to be compensated for loss of income. You really couldn't make it up, could you? Now, the problem with the new touchy-feely American administration is not that they want to be friendly and respectful towards everyone. That's very laudable. It's just that when you have a moral agenda like that, it can be tempting to cut corners, especially when it comes to inconvenient things like constitutional amendments. And if they're doing this now, outside the United States, where they can get away with it, it's only a matter of time before this is allowed to become international law, and then you know they're going to start trying to do it inside the United States as well. In the name of community cohesion. Get used to that phrase, America. It's coming your way. And this matters. It matters a lot, not only to Americans, but to all of us who see the American Constitution as the anchor for Western civilization, which is what it is. We know that no matter how spineless our politicians are here in Europe and elsewhere, and here in Europe they've barely got a vertebra between them, as long as America's First Amendment remains inviolate, there will always be an oasis of freedom on this planet that Islam cannot touch. But as soon as anyone is allowed to interfere with it, to water it down, to reinterpret, to chip and chisel away at the First Amendment for reasons of religious or cultural sensitivity, then we can wave our civilization goodbye. 
Americans voted for change at the last election. They didn't vote for surrender. Watch what's happening in Europe, America. Cherish that constitution and don't let Islam anywhere near it for all our sakes. Remember the words of Mr. Omar Ahmed, co-founder of the Council on American Islamic Relations, who said that Islam is not in America to be equal to other faiths, but to become dominant, and that the Quran should be the highest authority in America. That will be higher than the Constitution then, by my reckoning. You know, if President Obama is serious about showing respect to the Muslim world, then he should pay them the compliment of telling them the truth, that their religion is entitled to as much respect as it gives, zero. And that with their record, no Islamic country has any business even holding an opinion on human rights, let alone serving on a legislative body. That asking the people of the free world to compromise their fundamental values is far, far more insulting than any set of cartoons or any book could ever be. And that if the Islamic countries had an ounce of genuine honour between them, they would issue a full and unconditional apology. That's what he should say, because that's the truth. Everyone in the free world knows it's the truth. So let's hope the truth becomes fashionable again, before too long. Peace.